And together for the man of God this morning. Let's just worship the Lord right now. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Somebody exalt him right now. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I was glad when they said unto me in Michigan, in the middle of the winter, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so very much. Love this great, tremendous church. Had a wonderful time Friday night, and it was just a, a miracle for us. Really, we can never get out of town. It takes us forever to get out of town when we're going somewhere. And we were able to get quickly out of town on Friday and got in much earlier than anticipated. And we were able to go with dinner with the walkers. And as we was uh, talking with them, uh, they were just talking about really feeling like they needed to go and see their lifelong uh, friend, the Brother Pasley, in the hospital. And um, Brother Pasley's son-in-law is my lifelong friend, Brother Tom Ellis. I was roommates with him in Bible school. And my wife and I just kept saying, go, go. Everything's going to be all right. It's okay. Go. And, um, but I'm still grateful we had that time on Friday night. And you, you know this already, but I'm going to say it again. You have some of the greatest leaders on the face of this earth. And they are amazing people, and they are uh, so wonderful in our life. We don't get to hang out with them all the time, but one text from Brother Walker uh, every six months can totally change the direction of my life. And um, with godly people, you just need a little bit sometimes, and it's amazing. But I do know that if I were to call Brother Walker, he's going to answer or call back quickly. And so it's just great to have people like that in your life. Thank you, this great church. Uh, yesterday, we had an amazing time with the families. And uh, Brother Joey, I love you. I see you around all the time. This past year we've had several opportunities to get to talk at holiday youth convention and at pi and different things and i'm praying for you and loving on you right now and god bless you and in the midst of all this yesterday um brother joey was in the house of the lord on sunday brother joey was in the house of the lord and when we don't understand what to do you go to the house of the lord amen and this incredible youth team uh, brother, J Justin's running around here somewhere, I'm sure, playing the drums while he's walking and playing the keyboard at the same time. And um, I just want to be half as talented as his left arm someday. But um, all of these incredible people. And then I see her walking, pacing back and forth, doing things now. Um, Sister Rochelle has been a great blessing to me in the camp area of camp and so she was our camp secretary and i would say during camp season she's a great blessing but uh, if you're actually involved in camp it is a 12 month process and i told her that it's the gift that keeps on giving you're always like i'm in november i text her something about camp and said sorry i know this is the gift that keeps on giving but I say all this to say this, this is a great church with many great leaders. We thank you for all that you do and the kingdom of the Lord. And I'm sure that Sister Lori Wagner wrote one or two volumes of books this morning before breakfast. And um, just such a great impact. She can write faster than I can read. And I think that's pretty amazing. Um, but this church has such a, an impact on so many people. We're going to talk about some of that. Amen. Amen. 
glad to have my two girls with me, my wife and my daughter. And I don't know where she's. Okay, hallelujah, she's okay. And uh, she yesterday was our photographer, taking pictures of everybody yesterday. And uh, she received the gift of the Holy Ghost at General Conference this year, seven years old. Amen. And she's been doing puppets and leading worship songs, already just jumped into ministry, and I'm so excited about that. I'm going to do something very cruel right now. I'm going to talk about Mackinac Island. In the middle of the winter, 38 degrees out right now, but it's supposed to drop later next week. But we're going to talk about Mackinac. So I, we go every year to Mackinac, and um, it's our one vacation that we do with the whole family. Family vacation is a contradiction of terms. <laughs> family and vacation. If you put 18 members of a family on an island for eight days, you need a vacation after the vacation. And it's great the first couple of days. I love it. And, but I'm ADHD, D, 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 and sorry about all the people that I have totally uh, disrupted this morning because my brain, I told the sound man, I'm sorry, I am an ADHD overdrive today. And I've had everybody working this morning. Thank you so much for helping me this morning. And um, which I just forgot my thoughts. So uh, by the third day, I'm, I'm ready to swim off the island by the third or fourth day. But thankfully, they put in a Starbucks. Uh, the, only, the only modern store there on the island. And so I was sitting there and had my computer on, had my earbuds in, and I was... Uh, doing some stuff, and then I started listening to the Word of God, and I like to listen to it and read it at the same time, and I was going through, and it was just kind of a mundane day, and I was in Jeremiah chapter 50, because, you know, I mean, if you really want to be encouraged, you know, you read Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Job or, uh, you know, if you're new to the church, just let me tell you this, read the New Testament, you know, get just kind of start there. My mother-in-law, I was sitting in her house this week, and I opened up her apostolic study Bible that we got her for Christmas a year ago, and every single page of the New Testament was underlined and circled and bracketed. And at one point in time, I was talking to her, and she said, you know, I just kind of stay in the New Testament because I'm 82 years old. I already got the Old Testament now. I just need stuff to live for Jesus right now. <laughs> and at some point in time, you just stay right there in the Word. But I was in Jeremiah, and I was reading. All of a sudden, it jumped. something jumped out at me. And it said in verse 22, a sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction supposed to be on vacation you had there we go and uh i just man my brain went nuts i just exploded as i started on the computer and um you know not supposed to be doing sermon prep or any of that kind of stuff on the island um there's rules about those kind of things but um, problem is, when you're a preacher, you just can't turn it off. It's always there. And so I just started going in overdrive, and I started thinking there is a sound of battle in the land. Has anybody read a newspaper this week? Been around news this week? Had an app that pops up? You know what? I've turned the news notification off on my app because it just keeps popping up. And, you know, just if you don't know this, there's nothing positive that's popping up on there. <laughs> news alert. Somebody just gave $500,000 to orphan children, and they're helping their future. That's not the, uh, the lines. And it's about Florida and, and the hor horrendous 17 children being shot. And so many, I read this week that a mass shooting is considered, when four people are shot, it's considered a mass shooting. And since Columbine, there's been over four hundred mass shootings 
in the United States. There is a sound of battle in the land. Amen? We are in a spiritual warfare. There is an opposition against the church. There is wars and rumors of wars. There's principalities and powers that are coming against the church. We, you know life's bad when you don't know which restroom to walk into. I'm not trying to be cute, but that should be the most fundamental thing a person can do is identify a restroom. But when we're so confused that we can't figure out which restroom to go to and what our gender is and who can marry who and who can go where, there is a battle in the land. And here's the thing. It's not about you and me. It's about they are targeting our children. They are targeting our families. It's no longer cool to have a family that has been together forever. You are now a minority if your mother and father never divorced like my parents. When my mother passed away 39 years together. And we are under attack. Politics and, and the junk that is going on. And the devil is against us. I was having a conversation with Sister Rochelle before church, and we were talking about a mutual acquaintance. And this person 10 years ago told me that I said, what is it you feel called to do? And he said, I feel to be called. He goes, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I feel to be called to be the next brother David Bernard of the United Pentecostal Church International, the next apologist that's going to write books and defend the faith. And that person has become an enemy of the church instead because a demonic attack has come against him and all of his associates because when you lay down the gauntlet and say I'm going to live for the Lord I'm going to declare the name of the Lord then there is a battle that comes in and begins the Bible says the enemy comes in like a flood and I've watched a spirit of delusion come upon this person but this young man had a, a heart for God at one point in time but now a sound of battle is in the land you have to gird up your family you got to gird up the loins of your mind and say choose you this day whom you will serve but as far as me and my house we're going to serve the Lord but let me tell you something once you make that declaration every devil in hell is going to come against you when you decide that I'm going to be an apostolic no matter what there's going to be a sound of battle that's going to come in the land I was pastoring in Adrian, Michigan and I stood in the pulpit and I said, as long as I am filling this pulpit, we are going to preach truth. We're going to be apostolic. I believe in one God. Tongue-talking, heaven-bound believer. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in the Spirit of God. I preached until I couldn't preach anymore. That night I went to bed. That night, this is crazy, I was bitten by a bat. Yes. And I was told by the doctor, as far as we know, you're the only one in Michigan that's ever happened to. And I know it was a little weird. But it was like I was put on notice. You have met, because in my mind, bats come from this place. You have messed with the gates of hell. And you are messing in our territory. And that night I was bit by a bat. About six months later, no, three months earlier, my brother had died. A few months later, my aunt passed away. My grandmother passed away. My mother passed away. We lost two jobs. And all hell broke loose once I made a public declaration that I don't care what my friends are doing, what my peers are doing, what my family's doing, but as far as me and my house, we will be apostolic. 
You can blame my wife for this, and if you need to put on sunglasses, <laughs> that's okay, but I'm about ready to explode here. This is my Christmas present. But here's what Psalm says, 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength. Yes, everything's going crazy. But God is our refuge and strength. Not ESPN, not CBN, not any of these ends, not, none of this crazy stuff. Not my newspaper, not my neighbor. God is our refuge and strength. Let me just stop for a second. Be careful where you're looking for an answer. I used to tell our church, if you need something, go talk to somebody, not everybody. And whatever you do, don't go to Facebook. God is our refuge and strength. We knew a lady was having marital trouble, was very close to my wife. We've been married for... 16 years now. She had another friend. One had been married over 16 years. The other one had been divorced four times. Guess who she went to advice for? She went to the one that had been divorced four times. Guess what happened within that year? She had a divorce. Be careful who is speaking into your life. Go to somebody of godly countenance. Go to a godly counselor. I believe in counseling and all these different things. But make sure it's based on the word of God. Make sure what's coming in you is God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, I know things are going crazy. I know Trump's Twitter account's out of control. I know everything's going. I can't control that. I don't have any ability to stop that. But therefore, I will not fear. I'm sorry, Bible quizzers. Um, this is the Moorhead version. I, I, I'm sorry. I forget I'm here at a Bible quizzing church. you got to quote it right or you get in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried away in the midst of the sea, though the waters therefore roar and be troubled and there's school shootings and there's craziness online and our families are being attacked, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. I know I started out a little negative. Just hang on with me, okay? There is a sound of battle in the land, but there is also a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Any time that there is evil in the land, uh, there's going to be grace in the land. Where sin abound, grace much more will abound. Any time there is going to be tares, there's also going to be the wheat that's going to stand up and grow. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I've come to tell somebody, hang on. Help is on the way. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Helps on the way. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. God is here today. She shall not be moved. God shall help you. That right and early, he's going to help you. The heathen rage. Life is out of control. The kingdoms were moved. Protests are on every side. But he uttereth his voice and the earth melted. God can speak into your situation with one word and it will be melted. My wife told this story this morning. She had a board member that was fighting her school district and fighting her. She was on the board but fighting against the very thing she was supposed to be supporting, causing all kinds of issues. But the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He, God, uttered his voice and the earth melted. This board member responded to someone on Twitter with six words. 
Her tweet consisted of six words. And God was able to take those six words and remove her out of play from all of the garbage and all of the mess. And she resigned over six words on Twitter. And God said, okay, you've had your way. You've been doing, but now I'm going to utter my voice. And the earth is going to be melted. This issue is going to be melted. And this person responded to someone with six words. And now has totally pulled herself out of play with six words. There are several meanings here. Six words can ruin your life. Be careful what you put on Twitter, on Facebook. I've decided that my Facebook is going to be yay, yay, and nay, nay. I've just decided I'm not going to subtweet and make you try to think what I'm thinking and, and try to determine what Brother Moorhead's talking about. I'm just going to use mine as a testimonial page, and I just talk about the goodness of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It is time that we start allowing God to utter his voice. This weekend was so wonderful because we were with you, but we've also been under a heaviness, and my wife has been under a heavy attack. And when we came home from the room last night, she read the email of the resignation of that board member over six words because God opened his mouth and the opposition melted. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, God can change your situation. Don't give up hope. Don't back down. Don't stop. Just keep standing. God can change the narrative with six words in your life. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. You know what the problem is? We're too concerned with our works and not his works. God, not my will, but thy will be done. I got to get out of the way. I got to quit working and let the Spirit have her work. God, let me move flesh out of the way so that Spirit can break forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The works of the Lord. They are mighty in our eyes. We need the work of the Spirit in this day more than ever before. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations He hath made in the earth. If you want to talk about a battle, let's talk about when He begins to work. When Jesus gets to work, there will be a desolation in the land. He is the one that maketh the wars to cease and to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He will fight your battles for you. He can walk into a school district. He can walk into a hospital room. He can walk into a counseling session with you and your husband or you and your wife. He can make the addicts in your family clean. He can change the narrative of your story. The Bible says he will work who will let him. I wonder if there's somebody that will say, I'll let you work in my child's life. I'll let you work in my marriage. I'll let you work in this dysfunction. I'll let you work in my midlife crisis. I don't know what's next. I don't know what you're doing. But I'm going to let you work today. Here's what he said. I hate this part because I'm ADHD. I mean, this is, this is like totally against me. This is what he says. He says, I, don't, I can't even really say these words out loud. <laughs> I've been pacing the whole time I've been preaching because I can't be still. I'm ADHD and I'm from Arkansas. You tie my hands together, my lips quit moving. Because I talk with my hands. But Scripture says, be still. Look at your neighbor with a really nice smile and say, stop. Stop it. 
Stop what you're doing. Stop trying to micromanage your children's lives. Stop trying to put all the pieces in order. Stop trying to control each piece of your future. Stop trying to manipulate people to get things lined up the way it needs to be. Just stop it and be still and know that I am God, that He, he is God. And I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now, here's the mistake that I made. <clears throat> that many of us make. I took this verse out of context in that coffee shop. I got all excited and started dancing and shouting and started thinking about there's a sound of battle in the land. And I started thinking about all the news headlines and everything was going on. But that is not what scripture is telling us here. It says, go up against the land of M. I haven't done hooked on phonics. I'm not even going to try it. Even against the land and against the inhabitants of Pecod. He's telling the prophet to go against the land. He's telling the church to go counter culture of what is taking place place he's telling the people of God to rebel against their current situation and to waste and utterly destroy after them why do you talk about relationships and marriage being of one man and one woman because we are going counterculture and we're destroying the picture that the world is trying to give us. Why are you worshiping in a house of worship? Because where two or three are gathered together, he's going to be in the midst and we're fighting back. We're going counterculture. Saith the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. Why are you being obedient in your dress? Why are you being obedient in your speech? Because we are obeying the commands of the Lord. And do according to all that I have commanded thee. And then it says... If you do what I've commanded you to do, a sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. The problem is when I read it like many Christians, I instantly went on the defensive. But what God is saying, the church needs to go on the offense. I was in a church and a pastor said, I've just got to the point. When people start meddling and causing church trouble, I say, devil, you caused church trouble tonight. I'm going on a three-day fast. Thank you, devil, for motivating me. Somebody left my church. They're mad. Thank you, devil. I'm going to teach three Bible studies this week. Thank you, devil. I appreciate it. He said, I'm just getting to the point when the devil comes at me, I'm going right back. You want to mess with my kids? I'm going to pray and fast all week for my kids. As Sister Walker would say, in your face, devil. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going on the offense. I'm not waiting for another young person to be snatched out of this church, Brother Justin. I'm not waiting for another sad story. We are going to have a weekend on Saturday and Sunday where we're going to train our children. We're going to train their parents. And we're going to go on the offense. We got to start praying before it happens. We got to go on a fast before we need a miracle. 
I've learned that when you need a miracle, it's usually too late to start praying. You're already in it. we got to start praying some predictive prayers. God, I need blessing. I need you to cover me. Hey, in the middle of it, what are you going to do? My dad, I was about five years old, was in the car driving down the road. Boom. Boom. Pop. Boom. Four flats. The car started going all over the place. Dad said, Jesus! And the car stopped. There was no time for a three-day fast. He couldn't call a peer and ask for godly wisdom. There was no prayer meeting. There was no scripture reading. But he was able to reach back on some prayers that had already been stored up. He was able to reach back on a devotional life that had already been stocked up. He just reached back in the well and dipped something from yesterday and said, Jesus! We got to get to the point that we're not living on today's blessings. But we got some stuff in the crib. We got some stuff stored up so that when life happens, we may be too depleted to spiritually go into warfare right then. But we've already been there. We've already stored up some weapons, and we can access it. It is time to go offensive. There is a sound in the land there's a sound of battle but there's also a sound of power in the land and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came and suddenly my wife was having a crazy weekend She was fretting. We were worried. We've been talking. And suddenly an email appeared. Suddenly God changed the narrative. And suddenly there was, he made a way where there seemed to be no way. And the other board member said, Miss Moorhead. Now this board member is a lady who my wife baptized in Jesus' name. And she received the gift of the Holy Ghost. My wife's been discipling her over the last five years. She said, Dr. Moorhead. We didn't even touch her. Nobody said anything. Nobody laid a finger. When you start storing up the anointing of the Lord, uh, you don't have to lay a finger. God begins to go in and make the crooked places straight. Uh, He says, hey, this is my child. Uh, Dr. Moorhead has given her life uh, a prayer and fasting and devotion. She has been godly to me, and she's been storing some things up. Now I'm going to go uh, and create a sound uh, of battle in the land. There is crazy things going on, but can I tell you some other things going on? Just go ahead and advance with me here. Show me the pictures. I've got my guys jumping all over, but they've been awesome. I need pictures. I know, it's out of order. Just just run to them. There you go. This is not the book of Acts, people. I'm not quoting the book of Acts to you right now. This is not when the forefathers of the United Pentecostal Church founded the UPCI. This is 2016. 3,500 received the Holy Spirit. 1,500 miracles reported in Bangladesh. I know there's a sound in America, but there's also a sound of revival that's happening, and it's happening right now. It's the wheat and the tares where sin abounds. Grace doth much more abound. In the middle of your family argument, God can move in with the Spirit of the Lord. In the middle of your chaos, God can move in. Because of the times, Philippines, February 2016, 35,000 people in attendance, 5,000 received the Holy Ghost in the middle of the nastiest political election that we've ever had in the history of America. People were receiving the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. 
Next slide. This is what Brother Raymond Woodward said. Did you notice? Acts chapter 2. 3,000 received the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 3, paralyzed man healed. Acts chapter 4, 5,000 filled with the Holy Ghost. All three have happened in the last week in three crusades. The book of Acts is happening in this generation, in the midst of all of the junk, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of identity confusion, in the midst of sin. Grace is abounding even more. 2015 stats, 214 nations and territories have the infilling of the Holy Ghost. 40,341 churches and preaching points. There's others that are doing things as well by all means, but this is just our numbers. 33,147 prophets, licensed ministers, 886 missionaries, over 3 million members. And those numbers are outdated because even in the midst of all of the junk, grace doth much more abound. I feel a little crazy right now. I just wonder... If there was a way to just have a sound. I'm tired of listening to all of the reports. I'm tired of being reactive all the time. I wonder what would happen if the church would go on the offense. It would be revolutionary. And why don't we do it? Nobody's holding this back. My challenge to you is that we should have a time of victory. My challenge to you is we need to create a standard. Jeremiah 51, if you can find that. I, I know I'm jumping, but so the congregation knows I've just skipped 15 slides. So that's good news for you. Jeremiah 51, 27 says, set up a standard in the land. I don't mean the. Speak church. That's okay. That's okay. That's what it says. It says set a standard in the land. If, let me say it a little different. It says you set your own standard in the land. This isn't being imposed by a leader that's coming in and saying something. It is saying you need to set your own standard. It come from an elder about here speaking in the spirit of the Lord. It's time for the church to set our standard that we make our own decision. This don't have to be voted in. There don't have to be a resolution passed. But as the church of the almighty God, we're going to set a standard and we're going to win this city in the name of the Lord. Set ye up a standard. Create your own. We talk about the Daniel fast. Daniel set up his own fast. We don't find out where it was passed down to him. He used intelligence. He used the spirit of the Lord. And he came up. This is what I need to do. We need some people to get in your mind. Now I'm not talking contrary Bible understand that but hey I don't have to be told to go to the house of the Lord I just know more heads go to church I just know more heads pray for people I just know we're going to have revival I just know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I just know set up a standard in the land blow the trumpet among the nations. Man, I wish we had a trumpet sound today. I wish there was a sound of a trumpet today. Now we did it before church. Can we do it during church? Just turn that up a little bit. Just turn that up a little bit. Again. I wonder if there's somebody that can cause a trumpet.
the Bible says that the trumpet gives a clear sound. We need to have a clear sound. If your peers don't know what you believe, that's a problem. We need a clear sound. Every time I point at you, we want that trumpet. If your brother-in-law don't know that you believe in God, that's an issue. We need a trumpet. If your neighbors don't know, we need a sound. If your schoolmates don't know, we got to create a sound of battle in the land. Now, David took over king. We're getting ready to land this plane. Just hang on here. David looked around and realized that a sound of battle had already happened against him. He realized that the presence of the Lord was gone. You know what? I'm going to make you guys work for it a little bit. All right, just stop right there. So David said, put it down, put it down. David said, you know what? It's time to go get the presence of the Lord. It's time. We're going to have a new standard here. We're not going to operate. I won't be king. Here's what David was saying. I will not be king without the presence of the Lord. I'm not going to do this job without the presence of the Lord. Youth team, youth leaders, you can't do this job without the presence of the Lord. Parents, you can't raise your children without the presence of the Lord. Music team, don't you ever get up there without the presence of the Lord. Leaders, don't ever speak without the presence of the Lord. If it's gone, you need to go get it back. That's what this warm-up weekend's all about. There's some of you have lost some things. It's time to take it back. It's time to go on the offense. Well, I'm just, if God didn't want me to have it, then if God wanted it, he, he'd just make it happen. If God wanted an obedient child, he'd just move on her and just make her docile and make her just so gentle and make Rose never talk back and just have a lovely demeanor. I don't want Rose to be docile. Because in gym class, one of her kids in second grade got hit with a hockey stick and fell and was weeping and crying, holding her arm. And nobody even noticed. But Rose put her hockey stick down and went over and sat down and said, My mama says that if you say the name of Jesus over and over, it'll make you feel better. Can I say the name of Jesus over you? girl said that won't help she said do you care if I try she said no Rose said daddy I held her hand and I started saying Jesus 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 and Rose says but daddy her hand was still hurt I said well what else happened she said she quit crying she quit crying she caught her breath she pulled herself together. She was okay. I'm glad she's a little bull because she just went over there and said, I'm going to pray the name of Jesus in your life. I may be seven, but I don't care. I'm going to pray anyway because I'm going to take back what some of these other leaders have traded in, what some of these other churches have forfeited. I'm going to reach back and get a hold of it as a seven-year-old. So David said, I'm not going to lead this kingdom without the Spirit of the Lord. So get a hold, get a hold of the, the Spirit. The Bible says they walked six paces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put it down. And they praised him. I need the church to praise him. I need the church to praise him. I need a sound in the house. I need a sound in the house. They just had church. They weren't there yet. The journey wasn't completed yet. Mom and dad weren't talking yet again. Uh, the family hasn't taken care of their issues yet. Uh, the debt hasn't been paid yet. But we're already praising on the journey. It's the warm-up weekend. We're just warming up. All right, let's go. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. And put it down. We're not there yet, but we're going to praise him. We're going to praise him. We're going to bless him. My miracle's not done, but help is on the way. I'm going to say this. I wrote it down. I've rewrote it. I've reread it. I've asked the Lord to check my spirit. I know this church is destined for revival. I know without a shadow of doubt in my mind that this church is destined for revival. Let me give you some reasons why. Sit down just for a second. Number one, this church is built on the Word of God. For a church that's built so much on the Word of God, it seems like they would be more enthusiastic about it. This church is built on the Word of God. I need my junior and senior Bible quizzers up here as fast as you can get up here. Right up here. I didn't mean for you to sit down. <laughs> Get up here. We got to bring this thing home. But we, th th there's some great time management tools out there that can help the church. And there's some great growth models that can help the church. There's a lot of great self-help that will help the church. And I believe we can use... We use what we need to use. But more than anything, this church, the growth must be built on the Word of God. If we're bringing the ark home, we've got to have a foundation of truth. Do I have any Bible quizzers that could just quote the Bible right now? Just quote three scriptures. Okay. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Woo! I wasn't thinking that verse, to be honest with you. But it's time that we get children that understand. Hey, look. I don't have to have a testimony that I never got drunk and never got, that I got high and, and that my family got messed up and I was in a DUI and got ran over and then God raised me up. No, we're going to have a young man that's got a testimony. I was never drunk. I memorized half of the New Testament. I speak when the Spirit falls on me. I, he kept me from some things. I, I've got a testimony. Look what the Lord has done. I don't have any diseases. I don't have any of that counseling heartbreak. All right. Six paces. One. Y'all stay with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woo. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Thank you, Lord. Stand up there so they can see you. All the pastors were not a man, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ, the God, the Father, who risen from the dead. And all the brothers which are with me, and to the church of Galatia, Grace being to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us for our sins and made deliver us from the presence of the world with our will and joy in our Father, to whom we go forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I tried to take the mic away from him. He wouldn't let me. All I heard was risen from the dead. But let me tell you, we have a God that's been risen from the dead. He's not dead. He's still alive. I know you're struggling. I know we get tired. I know opposition happens. But God's not dead. He is still alive. I need the church to praise with me. One, two, three, four, five. Six, put it down. Let's go ahead. Somebody worship in the house. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I have one. 
For as many of you has been, as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. For there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. I accidentally almost gave it to another guy here. The reality is we got to let the women speak out. I know this church does. In this battle, if we're going to win, we need all hands on deck. We need every fighter. We need every battler. We need every woman, every child, every young man. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to break out in revival in here. Come on, don't, don't leave me. But we're going to push for a few minutes. Come on, let's go. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Hurry, hurry, come on, speak. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I be afraid? But you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. You should be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Somebody clap your hands. We got to go a little faster if we're going to end this sermon. One. Two, three, four, five, six. The Bible does say six spaces, so I don't really know how long a space is. So we're, we're increasing the spaces. But somebody rejoice right now. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. But God is one. What's your name again? Teddy. Teddy. What was your nickname yesterday? Talkative Teddy. He was the class clown all day yesterday. He liked when everything get quiet, he'd make a joke. But hey, Teddy has the word of God hidden in his heart. You got another one in there? <laughs> It's all right. I told you one. Okay. God is a mediator of one. God is one. Let's rejoice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I'm going to give you a curveball. He's going to play that trumpet again. If you have children that are not saved, but you believe God will save them, I want you to rejoice like they've already been saved. That didn't go over very well. I want you to speak life into your children that don't know God. Go ahead and play that trumpet. I want you to clap and rejoice like they've already been saved. God's bringing them back right now. God's restoring the church. God's restoring the church. Go ahead and quote. For I do not frustrate the grace of God, but if I do just come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Uh, a false grace and trust be with you that you shall not obey the truth, for whose eyes has Christ evidently been set forth crucified among you? They shall obey the truth. Based off of the works of the Christ that's been crucified for us. He's already done the work. Now we must obey what God has already put in us. This church has enough teaching and knowledge to last you the rest of your life. Now you got to put this knowledge, this teaching into action. I'm not just coming to sit and learn more. I'm going to put it in action and create a sound of battle in the land. Come on church. Uh, one. Two, three, four, five, six. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that they might receive the adoption of his sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son. That's the same one. <laughs> um. We need the spirit of the son. We need Jesus Christ in this house. We need the Spirit of the Almighty God. Come on, one, two, three, four, five. Just run it down here. Six. Go ahead and turn it around. 
What we need, quizzers, you may be seated. We need a sound of battle in the land. You guys stay close. I don't know what we're going to do. I need everybody to sit down. We're getting ready to land the plane. Brother Justin, go ahead. Yeah, just stand right there. If, let me tell you another reason. I know there's revival. If you were, if you have attended Purpose Institute, will you stand up? Come on down, guys. Come on down. I want all my Purpose Instituters to come right, right on down here. All my PIs. All my PIs. We have to have the Word of God, but we have to have men and women of God that can speak the Word of God. We've got to have leaders if we're going to build great churches. And let me say, we've got a lot of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and there's probably even more leaders that have been qualified to speak the Word of God. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this house. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this house. I need you all just to stay right there for a minute. This isn't in my notes, but there's another reason for revival. I won't put you guys on the spot. What's your opinion? Brother Summers. I dropped Rose off in Sunday school class today. And I noticed about six or eight leaders in the room. There was a young married couple in the room. There was some single people in the room. There was a mother, a grandmother in the room. And then we had some elders in the room. They used to, they've been teaching Sunday school a long time. They used to do it a different way. A couple years ago, that they went to kind of, it could be a little bit more chaotic model. I mean, it's exciting, but things got changed up. And they could have taken their Bible and went home. I was talking to Brother Summers. He said, I said, how long have you been teaching? He said, it's been a long time. He said, a few years ago, they changed it. And he said, I started in the primary class. He said, and then they put a bunch of us together. And it's amazing. The elder could have resisted change. The elder could have said, I've never done it that way. And that's just not what we do here. I mean, I can't give you a scripture, but I'm pretty sure God intended all classes be separate. But he said, I like it. And he didn't tell me all this. I'm just assuming there's some younger ones that can run a little faster, and we're going to let them do all that stuff. But we're here, and we're just going to give our peace. We're going to give our heart. We need elders in our classrooms. We need elders in our students. We need elders. Here's what I feel we need to do today. This is a change, but we have all of our Purpose Institute leaders up here. 19, that is so powerful. Brother and Sister Walker, not even here. So awesome. If you need a sound in your life right now, I remember a man saying, I... We're in the desert. We're having a drought. Anybody feel like you're in a drought? You try to pray. Somebody was talking to me, Brother Moorhead. I, I keep coming. I keep praying. But I just don't feel it right now. What do I do? You keep coming. You keep praying. You keep serving. You keep doing what you're doing. I said it yesterday, it's not a feeling. He that knoweth to do good 
and doeth it not, to him it is sin. It doesn't say, to him that feeleth to do good. Because nobody would be here this morning. We'd all be eating s'mores and drinking hot chocolate by fire somewhere. But it's not based off of feeling. It's based off of knowledge that I know what I'm supposed to do. And if I know that I got to be in the house of the Lord, if I keep coming, there's safety in the house. And eventually, you're going to be like that man. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound of children coming home. I hear a sound of finances being taken care of. I hear a sound of unity in the family. I hear a sound of baptism. I hear a sound of new tongues. I hear, I hear a sound of healing. somebody else I know some can't move around that's okay but I want everybody to be with somebody there's a sound in this house there's a sound of victory I hear the sound of an abundance of rain of revival in Troy Michigan 